Hey everyone, it's going to be my last segment before the marathon. And you know what? I had actually picked the Chicago Blackhawks to win the Stanley Cup before the playoffs began, and now I really regret not saying it out loud, but I, honest to God, actually picked those guys. My reasoning, I'm not a hockey expert or anything, my reasoning was that usually uh, the teams in the Western Conference are stronger, and the Blackhawks were the best-ranked team in that conference that weren't the San Jose Chokemeisters. And, well, turns out I was right. Maybe it was for the wrong reason, but I was right. Anyway, I did mention uh, my new controller at the end of the last video, and if you're curious what model it is, it's a Logitech Dual Action. It's basically just your basic controller with four buttons in the front, four shoulder buttons, two buttons to play the role of start and select, a D-pad, two analog sticks, fairly standard stuff. There's no rumble like in their rumble pad model though, so um, it's not like it really matters anyway because, as I have said previously, emulators don't really support rumbles anyway, and I don't use rumbles in any game. I am old-fashioned like that. I always turn off the rumble whenever I play a game, no matter which, no matter which game it is. And the fun thing about this controller is that I had to order it from Dell's website because on Logitech's website, well, I could find it on Logitech's American website, but I couldn't, you know, get it to ship here, so I had to go on uh, Logitech's Canadian website. But the Canadian website didn't have any dual actions, only rumble pads, but Dell's website, for some reason, sold dual actions in Canada, so that's what I did, and I even got a... Uh, an $8 discount for some reason, and I didn't even have to pay any shipping fees. So I got it for 25 Canadian dollars plus taxes. And I've been told that in stores, this controller is sold, uh, it's more expensive. My brother once saw one for about 35, 40 dollars. Though I think it did have the rumble, that being the rumble pad, of course, which is what my brother has, as I mentioned previously. So that's the story behind my controller. And so we're going to be having a Mario Marathon uh, next week, but if you've been listening to me for any length of time, you already know that. And I, I was supposed to take a week of vacation next week in order to be able to attend the marathon, but it turned out there was some crazy shit going on at work, and so I, I wasn't sure whether I could take that week of vacation next week or be forced to uh, delay it further, but uh, in the end my boss confirmed today that I could be able to take that week of vacation next week, so I am going to be able to attend the marathon. And let's make it perfectly clear, by attending the marathon, I mean watching it through the internet, being in the chat room and stuff, not going to Texas, no, that's not really in the plan. But, yeah, figures the marathon should be at the same time at E3, and I'm very fortunate because I don't really care about E3, though if you want to follow it... Oh, can't remember where you put the Master Ball? You mean this? It would be fun if I could take my character and have him flash the Master Ball. Hey, I got it! You want it? You want it? Well, you can't have it! It's mine! Mine! All mine! And, of course, I am going to head back because that room right there was the boss room. And there are still a few areas which I haven't checked out. And it's too bad I can't run because this is going to take a little while. But at least I'm not going to be ambushed by endless armies of Geodudes and Torkoals on the way there. And I got a nest ball out of the deal, but there's still another place which I haven't checked out, which is near the beginning. Yeah, I'm going to have to backtrack all the way through the, through the hideout just to get whatever is there. I hope there's a trainer battle, because it, it would suck if I backtrack all the way for something stupid like a super potion or something like that. And yes, by the way, I know I forgot an escape rope at the end of the magma hideout, but I'm not heading back there. Max Elixir! Well, at least that's fairly decent, but yeah, I'm not heading back through the entire magma hideout just to pick up a freaking escape rope, which I can sell for, what, $275 off the top of my head? No, not doing that. Thank you very much.
And now it's time to head all the way back to the boss room where Aqua Admin Matt waits. Now these guys here, those grunts, their purpose was just to stall me. And not doing a very good job of it because backtracking for items did more for stalling me than actually fighting those losers. So I think I am almost there and yep, yeah, we're here. <laughs> We really need that sound effect from Metal Gear. I'm just going to put Gardevoir as my lead because my law takes at level 49, which is on par with the rest of my team, so I think it's time to begin that Gardevoir catch-up job that I was talking about with the abundance of water Pokémon that's coming up. And now we're going to fight Aqua Admin Matt. Not stalling for time, I'm going to pulverize you! Well, wanna bet two bucks that he's gonna fail? But, yeah, he means business, and he really is a cut above the grunts we've seen so far. Too bad the grunts were such wusses that it doesn't really mean anything. My Tiana's Intimidate... Oh, yeah, I mean, a Trace Intimidate, but it doesn't do anything. It works in Generation 4, that, though I'm going to come back to that in a bit, because, well, I'm using Thunderbolt on my Tiana, and I'm glad to see that we managed to take it down, and we gotta level up, because, as uh, you probably know, Psychic doesn't do anything to my team. Okay, a gold bat. So I'm gonna use Psychic on it just to be on the safe side, even though Thunderbolt should easily kill it anyway. And let me get this straight. We got a Team Aqua admin that doesn't have any aquatic Pokemon. Super! Bravo champ! You could be any random trainer in the entire game and I wouldn't be able to tell. My Tiana and Golbat, the most aquatic species in Pokemon. Wonderful. And speaking of wonderful, <laughs> they managed to stall me for time just barely enough to, to uh, you know, allow the submarine to get away. If only I didn't backtrack for that max elixir and that nest ball, I would have made it in time easily. Well, no, not really, because no matter what you do, you're still going to be one second too late. So, with the Aqua Hideout done, and they're nice enough to send you near the beginning of the place instead of forcing me to backtrack all the way, I'm going to heal at the Lily Cove Pokemon Center, and then, if you paid attention to what Matt said, he sent me off on the wide vast sea beyond Lily Cove. That means 11 sea routes of fun. Seriously, what Matt said there was the ultimate fuck you in gaming. There isn't a single line in the entire gaming universe that is as much of a middle finger, a double middle finger, no, a quadruple middle finger, as what Matt just said here. And, well, I really have no choice as much as I really don't want to do this. Let's get started! 11 sea routes in a row. Oh, man. And we're gonna start out with route 124. And, yeah, as I was about to say, E3 is going to happen at the same time as the marathon, so if following E3 is your thing, it's not really mine because I only really start caring about games once they're actually out and I can play them, but if, um, if E3 is your thing, then you can always follow it on sites like GameSpot or 4.9 to VastIceMountainTweet.com or other sites like that. But as far as I'm concerned, it's gonna be all Mario all the time, so I'm just gonna save this video for now and I'll be right back with more aquatic action! <laughs> 